Today we're talking about SEO for small businesses. Where where everybody go? I don't see anyone here. Uh, let me check Google. Not on page one. Uh, I don't. Oh, oh, there you are on all the way on page four. Does that hit a little too close to home? Let's do something about that. What's up, business heroes? I'm Dave, your self-employment sidekick, here to help you navigate the less than fun aspects of working for yourself, like unraveling the mysteries of search engine optimization. Showing up on page one of Google search results is the holy grail of small businesses. Not only is it as valuable, it is also almost as unattainable as finding the mythic chalice. So I'm gonna take the next few minutes to try to demystify SEO as much as I can and give you a few action steps that you can take right now to start moving in the right direction. So first, what is SEO? SEO is not the only way to get found by customers online. I just wanna lay that out right at the beginning because SEO can be very competitive, especially depending on where you're located and the sort of industry you're in. SEO is definitely one of those things where your mileage may vary depending on a whole ton of variables. And not everybody has the time and the budget they need to really invest at getting that top rank. I'll tell you right now, your money might be better spent investing in other marketing strategies to help build awareness of your brand. But regardless, if you're a pizza shop in Manhattan or you have a very niche business, like you make custom hamster-sized tuxedos, I, I don't know. <laughs> there are things that you can and should do to lay the groundwork to make sure you're at least not neglecting possible opportunities for people to find you organically on Google and... Bing still a thing? <laughs> so as we get into this, one thing to understand is SEO is not one thing. It's actually over 200 different things, or at least that's the widely publicized number of Google's ranking factors. But for simplicity's sake, let's break it into three legs of an SEO tripod technical SEO, on-site content, and backlinks. I'll do a quick rundown of all of these things and circle back around to give you a few ideas for some low-hanging fruit you can pick off each of these branches. Technical SEO. This is the way your site is actually structured and coded to ensure that Google's robots and crawlers and spidery things can actually read and understand what is on your website. Stuff like page titles, URL structure, image alt tags, proper use of uh, header tags. Technical SEO can also involve site speed and page performance, making sure that it's actually responsive. Although this does kind of blend into the next tripod leg, which is on-site content. This is what is actually on the site. Gone are the days of where you could just pack out a site with the keywords you wanted to rank for. That's how people used to do it in the early aughts. If you were a plumber, you might have a website that said something like, looking for the best plumber in Bucks County? Then hire Joe Plumber because he is the best plumber in Bucks County. Toilets are a thing that you get the whole idea. It wasn't really good or helpful, and that is what Google is looking for nowadays. Google needs to maintain the trust of people using its platform. They want to make you happy by delivering the best search results that are actually going to answer the questions that you're asking. It's not gonna cut it anymore to just stuff a bunch of keywords and try to hack their algorithm. They wanna make sure your site is user-friendly, it's pretty, it has genuinely valuable valuable content, it renders quickly and well on mobile devices because that's how most people use the internet nowadays if you haven't heard. So when you're thinking of on-site content, you need to be thinking about the whole enchilada. But all that being said, including relevant keywords in your website's content is still one of the primary ways Google and other search engines are going to know 
your site is about what it's about. I'll unpack on-site content a little bit more, but first let's hit on the third leg of the tripod, backlinks. If other sites are linking to your site, that's a vote of confidence that your site is delivering the good user experience and genuine value that Google is looking for. Especially if those sites themselves have deemed to be worthy or have high domain authority. Google likes to see other people trusting your site, it makes them more comfortable with promoting your site to their users. It's all about trust. So again, the three legs of the tripod, technical SEO, on-site content, and backlinks all work together. Whether or not you want to heavily invest in SEO, you should still take some basic steps to make sure that you're at least not doing things that are hurting you from being ranked highly because Google does penalize people for doing things the wrong way and it won't just make you not rank more highly, it will make you rank worse. So let's start talking about some action steps you can take to position yourself better to better position in search rankings. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Brero Growth Partners. If you have a small business or are considering starting one, you don't have to go it alone. The team at Brero, which full disclosure, I'm one of them, will come alongside you and make sure you are on the right path. You're busy running your business, Brero will help make sure it's running in the right direction. It's like self-employment sidekick on steroids. More helpful information, custom tailored to your business situation. It's not a bunch of suits telling you what to do and who to fire, and it's not a guru with a rented Lamborghini from Toro making empty promises about making a million dollars without lifting a finger. It's real human beings who genuinely want to see your business succeed because Brero understands stronger businesses make stronger families and stronger communities. You can learn more and get a free business evaluation at brero.com sidekick. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, let's dig in. There's a ton of different ways you can attack SEO. Instead of throwing a bunch of tips and hypotheticals at you, I'm gonna present some real life suggestions and steps I took with a client of mine recently. A couple years ago, I helped build a website for Courtney's Carolers. They are a singing group, really top class act, but I did not realize how competitive the Victorian carolers for hire space is in this area, and they were not ranking well in search results. They actually had like zero organic traffic, so we took a look at their site. They were missing some opportunities with their page titles and metadata, so I installed a WordPress plugin called Rank Math, and that helps walk through the process to make sure your site is set up with the right metadata. It'll even analyze and give you an SEO score for the content on each page, but more on that later. Another thing it does is help set up your schema markup. Schema, simply put, is special code you wrap around different pieces of information so you can let Google know that this is a street address and this is a recipe and this is your company name, and this is a book review. When search engines understand what your content is, they're able to present it in a more helpful way on search results pages. You're probably familiar with the Google Knowledge Graph where they'll show different types of content based on what you're searching for. If you're looking for an actor or an athlete, you don't have to go into the website at all. It will surface information from websites with a citation usually and give you a card with all the content right up front. It also comes into play in this world of voice assistants. Okay, Google, what's the nearest pizza shop? Perforio's Pizza and Pasta 2 is on 935 Veteran Wee in Levittown. It's 1.3 miles away and is rated 3.8 stars. All of that information had to be organized in a very specific way. The company name, the address, the ratings even. Technical SEO makes that possible. Another thing we did for Courtney's Carolers was go in and make sure that all of the images had alt tags assigned to them. Human beings without any visual impairments are able to easily see this is a photo of three lovely carolers in Victorian costumes. But if you're a robot, you wouldn't necessarily know that. Although they are getting frighteningly good at being able to identify what is in a photograph. 
Don't neglect image alt tags. It's an opportunity to include more relevant keywords, and it helps anybody who can't see and is relying on a screen reader to walk them through your website to understand what your website is about and how it looks. Most website builders like Squarespace or Wix will allow you to click into an image and add your alt tags pretty easily. If you're using WordPress, you can go into the media library and edit the title, the alt tag, description, and everything for your images. Moving on to on-site content. Now, while the site was technically sound and pretty to look at, the actual written content on the site was pretty sparse when it came to relevant keywords. This is where keyword research comes in. Think about how your ideal customers are searching for your services. Better yet, have a friend do it because sometimes you're a little too close to your own company and you might have some preconceived notions as to what terms you want to use. Maybe you're familiar with the industry jargon that the general consumer isn't. And you can go through a whole process to identify which keywords do you have the best opportunity to rank highly for. Now there's software available to assist with keyword research and available for free at least to try, but it can get expensive pretty quickly and there's a learning curve around it. Definitely check it out, but before you do, I'll recommend the same exercise I recommended to Courtney. Give a friend a prompt, have them pretend that they're planning a Christmas party and they need to find carolers to hire to perform. And have them note all the different search terms they use while researching the different options available. Better yet, have them record their screen. This is a great exercise to start with because it goes way deeper than just keyword research. You can get a better understanding of what information they find useful, what catches their eye, what were they finding and noting to help them make their decision. You should walk away with a better idea of what sort of content you want to include on your website and start enriching your content. Now be careful though. Remember, you wanna make sure that your content is natural and helpful. You don't wanna be the overly repetitive keyword stuffing plumber from earlier. Read your copy out loud and make sure it sounds natural, like something a human would actually say. If Google thinks your keyword density is too high, it's gonna start counting that against you. I mentioned the Rank Math plugin earlier. You can also check out Yoast or All-in-One SEO. All of them offer the same features. They just handle it a little bit differently, but most of them should give you an SEO score for the content on your page. You tell them what keywords you want to rank for, and it will give you some suggestions and grade you on how well you use those keywords throughout your site. And I believe they'll flag you down if it looks like you're keyword stuffing. Great tool to use. Now, most small business websites don't need to be very complex and include much content at all. Courtney's Carolers has a homepage, an About Us page, and a booking information page. And that's about it. They don't have a huge digital footprint, and there's not a lot of space for them to include keywords without it getting repetitive, unhelpful, overly thick, and stuffy. What's a Victorian Caroler to do? Blog. I know, I know. I don't like blogging either. I left all of that behind in college when Zanga shut down. Who's got the time? What are you gonna say? Who even cares? I mean, they're not even finding me online to know who I am to care about what I say on my blog. All right, we're getting this all wrong. A blog can actually be the main gateway into your site. At a university I work with, one of their most trafficked web pages, second only to the homepage, is a blog article that answers the question, what should I major in if I don't know what I want to do after high school? And the school gets all of that traffic. Courtney might consider writing an article about how to throw a COVID safe Christmas party or recipes or decorating ideas for a Victorian themed Christmas party or even who was King Wenceslas. What sort of questions can you answer that are related to your industry? Make sure it makes sense. If you're a daycare center, you probably don't wanna do smartphone reviews, but you might write an article about smartphone apps for parents of young children. Most of the traffic isn't going to consider doing business with you, but you never know. 
well. And again, it's starting to build momentum. And as you blog and you add more posts and articles and content, your footprint grows. And what you might find is you were once a small fish in a very competitive sea, and you wouldn't stand a chance for ranking highly for your main desired keywords. But now that you're starting to get traffic for related keywords and topics, Google's gonna start nudging you a little bit higher and give you a better chance at ranking for your business related keywords. Good, interesting content might also give you a backlink benefit. Someone might have never linked to Courtney'sCarolers.com to promote their services, but they might link to their Victorian Christmas party playlist that they posted. And when that happens, they start to share some of their domain authority. Ideally, backlinks are established organically. They just love it so much they want to share it and send more people in your direction but you can do some proactive outreach and PR. If you're a member of a church or a meetup group, a chamber of commerce, you have connections with people who run other websites, maybe you have an employee who has a blog, or you serve other businesses. In the case of Courtney's Carolers, I recommended that she reach out to people who hired her in the past, and if they did an event recap write-up on their website, to make sure that they're including a link to her website. I don't know, there's a bunch of different ways you could approach this. It's a little bit of work, but it's worth it, unless it's not. And that brings us all back to where we started, SEO is not the only way to be found. I think it's worth at least a little bit of time to learn the basics of SEO to make sure you're not doing anything that's actually going to hurt you, but you might decide you don't want to go too much further than the bare minimum, and that's perfectly okay. It might be a lot easier and ultimately more cost-effective to spend some money on Facebook ads or Google ads and buy some eyeballs for your website. Take that lead generator that we worked on together in my previous video and put a little bit of money behind that and you can get qualified traffic to your site a lot faster than blogging about figgy pudding. Heck, hire a sign spinner or call the guys at Brero and they'll help you design a marketing and sales strategy that is custom tailored to your business. Just saying. But before I take a ginormous topic like SEO and turn it into an even more giganormous topic like marketing in general, I'll leave it there. I just wanted to introduce and demystify the core tenets of SEO and give you some action steps to consider. If this was helpful, please hit the like button. Actually, I'm gonna straight up ask you to tell other people about this channel because I really want to help businesses to thrive. I don't want people to have to just flounder around second guessing if they're doing the right thing or not. I want them to get the support they need so they can move their businesses forward or take those first steps to get it off the ground and start living a life of passion and purpose. If you watch this far, that's because you are doing something meaningful and awesome and heroic and I'm really into that. Hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what you're up to. Let me know if you have any questions about this. Again, I'm not an SEO expert, but I know some people who are, and I have a lot more value I'd love to share with you. So subscribe to this channel, share it with some friends, and I will see you in the next one.